Study the vapor pressure versus temperature graph for three organic compounds, X, Y, and Z below, which belong to different homologous series. The atmospheric pressure is 100. Okay. Oh, and by the way, questions will be split onto separate slides. And so there we've got the first ones and this, the, the last part. part. Okay. okay, so let's begin. It says write down the vapor pressure of compound Y at 90 degrees. So here's compound Y, it's this line over here, at 90 degrees. So this is 70, This is 75, so I think this would be 80. Let's just take 80, 85, 90, 95, yes. Okay, so then 90 would be 80, 85, 90. It would be this line over here. It would go to Y and then go across. There we go, 150 kPa. The graphs can be used to determine the boiling points of the three compounds. Define the term boiling point. Okay, so boiling point, yes, it is the temperature where a liquid starts turning into a gas, but that is not the technical definition. Uh, let me explain how to get the technical definition. So if you have a pot full of water, okay, there's pot full of water. Now, in the environment around you, like if you look around the room that you are in right now, there is air around you, of course. And that air is exerting a pressure which we call atmospheric pressure, okay? So there is always atmospheric pressure. And I'm gonna do that in green. Let's say there's green because there's always gas molecules floating around us, nitrogen, oxygen, all sorts of gas molecules. So there is already a pressure in the environment around you and that's called atmospheric pressure. Now, if you put water on a stove and you begin to heat it up, even before it begins to boil, you would see that there is, some of it is being converted into gas. And what happens is that that, that is gonna start producing its own pressure. Here, this is its own little pressure over here due to the liquids that are converting into water vapor molecules, okay? At the moment when the pressure of these gas molecules from the water that is being switched from liquid into gas, when that pressure becomes the same as the environmental or the atmospheric pressure, that is when boiling takes place and that is when you're gonna start seeing the bubbling taking place. So boiling point is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a um, liquid in equilibrium with its vapor, it's the temperature at which that pressure becomes the same as vapor pressure. So let me go get the definition for us. And so boiling point is the temperature when the vapor pressure of a liquid becomes the same as atmospheric pressure. Okay, let me get the definition for us. So here we have it straight from the memo. It is the temperature at which the vapor pressure of a liquid is equal to the atmospheric or external pressure. Think about that carefully, especially when they ask us the next question. It is the temperature where the vapor pressure of the liquid is equal to atmospheric pressure and they told us that atmospheric pressure is 100. Okay, now it says determine the boiling point of compound X. So if you look at X, it's this one. And we know that boiling point is when its vapor pressure is the same as atmospheric. Now atmospheric is 100, so we'll go to 100, we'll go to X's line and then drop down and that would be 55 degrees Celsius. Study the vapor pressure. Okay, no, we've already studied the graph because this is a carry on from the previous one. The homologous series to which the three compounds uh, were identified in a random order is alcohol, carboxylic, and ketone. Okay, so one of these is an alcohol, one of these is a carboxylic, and one of them is a ketone. Which compound is the carboxylic? Okay, so we know that boiling point, we know that all of these are gonna boil when the vapor pressure is 100 because we said that boiling point is when it reaches atmospheric pressure. So if we look at X, we already said that X boils at 55. If we look at Y, Y would boil at around 80 degrees. 
and Z would boil at around somewhere over 100 degrees. So you need to now understand that molecules, I'm going to write this down, the molecule with the highest boiling point is the one that has the strongest intermolecular forces. Okay, we've spoken about this before, guys, where if you have molecules that are very difficult to separate because the intermolecular forces are so strong, then the boiling point needs to be very high in order to separate them and convert them from a liquid into a gas. Okay, think about that pot of water that I showed you now. If you have a pot of water boiling on the stove and you've got these molecules, how do they go from a liquid to a gas? Well, you need to be able to separate them. And the way that you do that is by overcoming those strong intermolecular forces that are holding them together. So if something has very strong intermolecular forces, then the boiling point is much higher because you need more energy to separate them. So then if you think about alcohols, carboxylics, and ketones, you've got to think about the types of intermolecular forces between them, and you need to know which ones are stronger. So we know that with alcohols, they've got the COH part. So we know that between when there's this OH part, there's definitely going to be hydrogen bonding, which we know is very strong. With ketones, they don't have an OH part, but what they do have um, is, for example, something like that, and then this would be another ketone. We know that this is a dipole, or a, this is a like a, a, a polar section, and another polar section, and so in between here, there's dipole-dipole. So we know that the strongest part of a ketone is a dipole-dipole force, and then carboxylic acids, they have they also have the OH part. So does that mean that oxygens, I mean, <laughs> does that mean that alcohols and carboxylic acids have exactly the same boiling points? Well, no. Maybe you've seen me mention this before, but did you know that carboxylic acids, they actually have, um, how can I explain this? So let me, let me actually get a separate page. Um, how can I say this? Um, when, Two, when you have two carboxylic acid molecules next to each other, there are two places where hydrogen bonding takes place. For alcohols, there is only one place where hydrogen bonding takes place. So if you have, if you are comparing alcohols and carboxylic acids, and you've got the same number of carbons in both, carboxylic acids will actually always have the higher boiling point because they have even, they've got more places where hydrogen bonding can take place. So they are more difficult to separate and so they have the highest boiling point. So that means that Z is going to be the one that had the highest boiling point. That's going to be the carboxylic acid. The next one, which is Y, that's going to be the alcohol. And then the other one is the ketone, which only has dipole-dipole, which is not as strong as hydrogen bonding. That'll be, um, that'll be X. Okay. So it says which compound, X, Y, or Z, is the carboxylic. And that is going to be uh, the carboxylic we said was Z. Now for four marks, it says, explain your answer by referring to the type and the strength of intermolecular forces found, forces in compounds of each of the homologous series above. Okay, so what we can do is we can say that um, ketones have London forces and dipole-dipole. Remember, they've got London and dipole-dipole. Okay, uh, ketone, ketones have dipole-dipole uh, forces between molecules. 
okay? Now, um, alcohols, alcohols have um, all three. They've got London, Dipo Dipo, and one place for hydrogen bonding. And then we can just say between molecules, okay? And then, and, and uh, let me just show you why alcohols have, why I'm saying that alcohols have all three. Because if I draw an alcohol, let's draw a basic alcohol like that, and then if I draw another one, so we obviously know that there's a hydrogen bond over there, right? So that's where the hydrogen bond comes in. But now if you look at this carbon oxygen part, that is a polar area. And so that polar area and that polar area there is where we're getting the dipole dipole. And then if you look more towards the left hand side where we're just gonna have the, these are more just the basic carbon hydrogen areas, which are non-polar sections. Those areas there, because they're both non-polar, that's just where you're going to get the London forces. So they've got London forces, they've also got dipole dipole, and they've got hydrogen bonding. Okay, carboxylic acids is exactly the same. They've got exactly the same London forces, dipole dipole, and two places for hydrogen bonding between molecules. Okay, and that's the key, is that carboxylic acids and alcohols, they both have hydrogen bonding, dipole, dipole, and London, but carboxylic acids have two places where um, hydrogen bonding can take place, whereas alcohols only have one. This question says, compound X, which is the ketone, has three carbon atoms. Write down the IUPAC name. Okay, so pretty much they're saying, find the name of a ketone that has three carbons. Very easy, because... A ketone has a double bond oxygen attached to the carbon that is in between two carbons. So there is no other way you could have drawn this because the this part here cannot be on the end because otherwise it would be an aldehyde because aldehydes always happens on the side. Okay, I'm not going to get into that right now. But the name of this would literally just be prop and you could literally just say propan one. You don't have to say propan one. You don't have to say, you don't have to show that the double bond oxygen is on carbon number two. Why? Because it can only be on carbon number two. It can't be on carbon number one. You can't have a ketone where the double bond oxygen looks like this because then it's not a ketone anymore. Then it's an aldehyde because then the double bond oxygen is on the side. However, if you did decide to name it with the double bond oxygen on carbon number two and you say something like propan 2,1, they usually still will accept it because it is correct, but you can also just leave it as that.